Hello, my name is Paolo Ghia. I'm from Università Vita Salute San Raffaele in Milano. And at the last EHA Congress in Madrid, I presented the work that described the combination of Zanobrutinib, uh, second generation BTK inhibitor, plus Venetoclax, the BCL2 inhibitor, for the treatment naive patients with CLL and deletion 17P and or P53 mutation. These are the preliminary results from the Sequoia study, the ARM-D. The Sequoia study is a rather complicated study where Zanobrutinib has been compared to the combination of Bendamast and Plastitucumab. Uh, it has been also delivered as monotherapy to patients with deletion 17P. And then the ARM-D of the study included only at the initially patient with the deletion 17P and or P53 mutation where we wanted to assess the combination of Zanobrutinib plus uh, Venetoclax. Now the, uh, the ARM-D enrolled uh, also patient uh, without the deletion 17P and P53 mutation, but here uh, in Madrid, I presented the data only for patients with high risk disease. The treatment of, of the patient consisted in three cycles of Zanobrutinib as a lead in to debulk the patient before initiating the combination with venetoclax that went on for at least 20, 12 months, but up to 24 months. And then following the combination, the patient uh, continued the Zanobrutinib monotherapy. And the patient could stop the treatment if they reached undetectable MRD in two consecutive peripheral blood and then two consecutive bone marrow assessment if they receive at least 12 months of the combination or any time after the end of the combination, so under the monotherapy uh, treatment with Zanobrutinib. So in terms of, uh, of uh, adverse events, uh, no particular uh, new uh, adverse event has been uh, seen and the uh, patient uh, showed the diarrhea, neutropenia, infections, um, including also COVID-19 infection, but no death during the study. In terms of response, 100% of the patient achieved the complete remission. And uh, more importantly, we also checked for undetectable MRD. And at the moment, the best undetectable MRD was 59% in peripheral blood. And of course, the responses are deepening with uh, the prolongation uh, of the treatment. Uh, at the moment, only three patients have stopped uh, because of uh, achieving undetectable MRD, and most of the patients are still under uh, treatment. So hopefully in the future, we will be uh, showing results of the patient who stopped um, based on undetectable MRD. Uh, with the median study follow-up of 31.6 months, the median PFF was not reached. And the 12 month and the 24 month progression PFF estimates were 95 and 94 percent respectively, though, of course, at this moment, most of the patients are still under treatment. In conclusion, the data are very promising, showing a high efficacy of the treatment and uh, with the, uh, that is very well tolerated by the patient with no new um, unexpected adverse events. And uh, of course, we want to see if and how we can stop the treatment in patients with high risk CLL, so those carrying deletion 17P and P53 mutation, and hopefully we will be able to show that in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.